Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we will give brief introduction of the source free series RL3 circuit. Now, a circuit containing two storage elements that is, two capacitors, two inductors, or one capacitor, one inductor, they are called the second order circuits. And because their responses are described by the differential equations that contain second derivatives. So if you see the circuits below, here we have one inductor, one capacitor. Here again we have one capacitor, one inductor. Here we have two inductors. And in this circuit we have two capacitors. So all these have two storage elements and so they are the second order circuits. Now when we so when we talk of a source free RLC circuit, series RLC circuit, so you can see this circuit, resistor, inductor and capacitors, they are in series. And now we have a source connected, which is charging the inductor and capacitor. When we disconnect this switch from top and bring it to down at t is equal to zero then this voltage source is out and so our circuit will look something like this this is the circuit and this circuit is now source free and the current in the uh, circuit is flown by the charges stored in the inductor and capacitor one more thing we have to keep in mind that at t is equal to 0 or at t is equal to 0 minus the voltage to which the capacitor is charged is called V0 and the current at that moment steady state current uh, through the inductor is called I0. Always keep in mind that we, when we talk of capacitor we talk of capacitor voltage and when we talk of inductor, we talk of inductor current. And now, at t greater than zero, that is when the, this is the circuit at t greater than zero, the circuit is being excited by the energy initially stored in the capacitor and inductor. And so we can write the KVL equation. And KVL equation is R into I then LDA dt and the voltage across the capacitor. So we write, write it like this. So this is the KVL equation. So we were here and now to eliminate this integral we differentiate the equation one more time. So this will now become R di dt this will become double differential here and this integral and differential will cancel each other so it will be I over C. And if we rearrange like we divide by L, so this becomes the equation and this is called the second order differential equation as we discussed earlier where is power is 2, degree 2. And as we have seen in chapter uh, number 7 that the first order circuits have the current in exponential forms. So based on that experience we can assume that the current in this circuit also is of exponential form. And so we write it as capital A e raised to the power st. And now if we plug in this current into equation 8.4, we get these terms. So you, if you want, you can do it manually and see this is the result we'll get. Okay, so we were here and from here now we can take A E S T common. So we get this term. And now to make this zero, either the term in the bracket has to be zero or AEST has to be zero. Since AEST is the assumed current, therefore this cannot be zero. So the term in the bracket 
has to be 0. So we make this equal to 0 and this is called the uh, this is a quadratic equation and it is called the characteristics equation. And as you know that the quadratic equation has roots given by this formula and so based on this we can write the two roots S1 and S2. Now since this is slightly cumbersome uh, for writing and therefore we'll simplify, we'll assume some terms. So we're assuming that R over 2L is equal to alpha and 1 over under root LC is equal to omega and so if you plug in these values here then the equation simplifies so the root S1 is now minus alpha plus this term in the uh, under root and similarly S2. So this is now in more simplified form. Now omega naught is called the resonant frequency and alpha is called the damping factor. So this is a damping factor and omega naught is the resonant frequency. The two values of S indicate that there are two possible solutions for I. And so we now assume that the two solutions are I1 and I2 and given by these A1 ES1T and A2 ES2T. So these were the two possible uh, solutions. So the total current will be the summation of the two. So IT is the summation of the two. And to find the exact answer, we have to find the value of A1 and A2. And this is found uh, from the initial values of I0 and DI0 DT. Okay, so we were here, these were the two roots. We know that omega naught is the resonant frequency and alpha is the damping factor. And from here, we can then find or infer that there will be three types of solutions. Okay, what are those? So the first solution will be when alpha is greater than omega. Now see here, alpha is greater than omega. Alpha is greater than omega. This will be called the over damped case. Damping means it is controlling. And so like here, this is alpha and this is omega. So alpha has control over omega. So this is over damped case. And in case of an over damped case, the roots will be unequal or uh, distinct and real. If you see from here, since omega is greater than, uh, since alpha is greater than omega, therefore this term will be positive. And so the root will have a definite value and it will not be imaginary, it will be real value. The second case will, will be when alpha is equal to omega. So when alpha is equal to omega, this term will become zero. We call this as a critically damped case alpha is equal to omega and in this case also we will have the real root but now the values will be equal to because this term is zero so in both cases we will have minus one so the roots are equal and the third scenario will be when alpha is less than omega so when alpha has no control omega has more control so it will be an under damped case or it will be an oscillating case so there will be sort of a no damping so let's see this and in this case the roots will be complex because now see alpha is less than omega so this will be a negative term and so it will be uh, a complex j form And this is the uh, graphical representation. This was over damped case. It is taking more time to settle down. This is critically damped, immediately settles down. And this is under damped, so it will keep on dancing or oscillating. 
Uh, this was for the case of a charging. Similarly, in case of a discharging also, you see this is critical, very quickly settles. The over dam takes a lot of time and the under dams oscillates and then gradually dies down. Okay, so the based on the three cases, we'll have three different equations, uh, slight changes. These are the three equations that we have to keep in mind. Now let's solve, uh, discuss example 8.3 solved in the book. This is the circuit. We have to find the characteristics roots of the circuit that is S1 and S2. And we have to find uh, the natural response is over damped or under damped or critically damped. So this is what we have to find. So for that we need to calculate alpha and omega. And we know the formula, so we'll just plug in the values. So we get alpha equals 5. And omega we get equals 1. So plugging in these two values, we get the roots S1 and S2. These are the two values. And now about the damping since alpha is greater than omega alpha is 5 and omega is 1 so alpha is greater than omega so this is an over damped case and the over damped case is also visible from the roots because the roots are distinct that is different and real and so this is also showing that it is an over damped case. Now the practice problem similar values are changed we have to find alpha omega s1 s2 and we have to find the nature of response same way as we did alpha put in the values is equal to 1 omega is equal to 10 plugging in we get S1 and S2 and now from here you can see that S1 and S2 they are complex because we have a J component and from here also we can conclude that this is an under damped case oscillation but we will do this from the alpha omega relation since alpha is less than omega so alpha is 1 omega is 10 alpha is less than omega hence it is an under damped case. So I hope this gives you a preliminary understanding of this series RLC circuit. Thank you.